welcome back to Homestead Corner. Today I want to talk about 10 basic skills I think every prepper should have. So I have talked a lot about skills in the past. I think skills are one of the most important things that every prepper needs to have, especially basic skills. They're really easy to learn. A lot of them just take some practice for most things, a little bit of research, and they normally don't cost anything or they cost very, very little to get the supplies you need to practice. Um, but prepping skills are so, so important. They are going to be what saves you. It's nice to have a stockpile of all the things that you need, your food, things like that, but making sure that we are able to um, get through all kinds of different situations, we're gonna need skills. And a lot of these things aren't things that people do every single day, but it's very basic stuff and we all should know them. So I put together a small list of just 10 things, and I think there's tons of skills, more skills out there, but this is just 10 to get especially new preppers started if you're not sure what skills are going to be super handy for you in the future. So the first thing on my list is water filtration and water collection. So knowing how to collect water, uh, where to go to look for water, things like that, scouting out your area so if the grid goes down or clean water isn't available, that you can find other ways to do it. How to collect rainwater is really important. How to filter rainwater or any water for that matter. Knowing these different steps can really be useful for you. And as much water as you stockpile, it will never be enough in a long-term situation. So if something happens for a long period, you are going to have to know these skills. It is life-saving, definitely. The second thing on my list is first aid. First aid is another one of those things that, yeah, you can slap a Band-Aid on something. Sometimes you may know, need to know how to use a splint, how to make a splint, um, how to use all different kinds of stuff in first aid. I think it's really important. First aid books, there are tons of them out there. I'll link a couple that I like down in the description below if that's something you're looking for. But first, there's tons of videos also if you just look for first aid. Um, there are There's so much information out there on it. Taking a first aid and CPR class, I think is definitely worth the investment. I've taken a couple of them myself. It's only a few hours. You learn some great skills and it really is definitely worth it. You could save someone's life. Um, number three, fire starting. Watching someone else make a fire makes it look really easy. It really does. And because when you practice your fire starting skills, you get better and better at it. If you are just watching someone and looking at them doing it, they may have practiced thousands of times for this. So I know when I start a fire, it kind of comes sec second nature because I have been starting fires. Yeah. That sounds crazy, but <laughs> for my whole life, when my parents always had us off hiking in the woods and camping and things like that, we were always doing stuff, you know, outside. We always had fires at home. We had wood stoves. It was just the way that I lived. And those are the things, it comes second nature to me because I've always lived that way. And they're always things that I did. And but people that don't do this on a regular basis can really struggle getting a fire started, especially if you're not sure how to find dry wood, things like that. Um, you wanna make sure that you have those skills available to you and you know them. When something happens, you'll be able to just do it and it won't be difficult because sometimes getting that fire started, it can take hours and it can be frustrating. Um, I've had trouble myself. <laughs> it's not just, if you practice, you'll be perfect at it. You won't be perfect, but you'll be better at it because you've got the skill down. And those are the things that we really, really need are those skills. Number four on my list is sanitation. Keeping things clean, toileting, trash, things like that. Those type of things 
are extremely important during a gr long term grid down situation. You are you want to make sure that you've got some other toileting option for you, whether it's a bucket with a lid or a pool noodle, whatever you have an outhouse. If you're going to dig holes in the woods and do it that way, that's okay too. It's whatever is going to work for you. Um, practice those skills, figure out what's safe, what's not, how to take care of your trash. Um, in a long-term grid down situation, you do not want to be putting your trash out on the side of the road. People will go through it and see, hmm, what do they have in their house? I bet they have more. So you want to be very careful with that, putting trash out and learning to dispose of it and things like that are super important. Figuring out a plan how you're going to do that is really big. Uh, the next thing is number five, your health and wellness. Keeping on top of your health, making sure that you are healthy enough to do the things that you need to do. Eating right, diet, exercise, those type of things. You know, making sure you're getting good nutrients in your food, not just eating, you know, noodles and rice for a whole week. You want to make sure you've got the other nutrients that your body needs. You want some vegetables, you know, fruits meats, things like that, beans, whatever you can get for protein, having those things and knowing how to eat properly so you're not going to make yourself sick in a long-term situation is really important. And number six, how to grow food. Even if you only grow a little bit of stuff in containers on the porch, that's okay. Um, having that skill and knowing what you can grow in containers is really going to help you down the road. If you all of a sudden had to grow all your food, um, let's say the store shut down tomorrow, um, and then you, maybe you have a year's worth of food stockpiled. What are you going to do when that stockpile runs out? You've got to be able to grow food, harvest it, um, either forage for it, hunt for it, whatever your plan is, make sure that you ha know how to do these things. You want to have those skills so you can do it. I would hate to all of a sudden have no meat and discover that I have to learn how to hunt, you know, or I don't know how to track animals or, you know, if I don't have any idea about that, it's going to make it that much more difficult and you could starve if you don't have an idea how to get food, how to grow it or hunt it or whatever your plan is. And number seven, preserving food. Not everybody, most people cannot grow food year round. We have a very short grow season, so we have to maximize that to the best of our ability. And we want to preserve everything that we're not eating fresh. Now, I love to eat fresh right out of the garden. That's my favorite food, and that's the best food for you, having nice, fresh food. But those fresh foods, if you can grow way more zucchinis and squash and peas, things like that, than you can eat before they go bad, you want to be preserving those. Dehydrate it, freeze it, um, canning, I think all of the methods are important freeze drying whatever it is that works for you some people can't afford a freeze dryer and that's understandable they are super expensive uh, maybe only thing you have is a dehydrator dehydrators are wonderful they're fairly inexpensive and you can dry almost all your food uh, and there are ways to do it without any electricity. We have a drying net that we hang here on the porch in the summertime, and it just zippers close. And I love that drying net because there's no electricity. The air just dries everything out while it's in there, and it works wonderfully, you know. Or learning how to dry um, herbs and food and stuff inside in paper bags or whatever it is that you can do. Find a method that works for you and practice that skill so you're really good at it and you're confident that you're able to preserve the food that you need for you and your family. Because when you look at food, it looks like a lot, but when you have, when you're eating it three meals a day, every single day, it goes fast. You need a lot more than most people think you do. Number eight, problem solving. A lot of people don't think about this. I 
Um, sometimes I'm really good at problem solving and other times I'm not so good. I get stuck. What do I do about this? How am I going to fix this? Sometimes it takes a lot more to figure things out and some people are better at it than others and that's just the way it is. But practicing problem solving skills can definitely help you in the long run because when an event comes up, you know, some people will get a flat tire on the side of the road and they don't know what to do. They have to call for help. Knowing how to change the tire or that you need to change the tire can be super helpful. Um, it's really can help you in the long run. You know, if you have any kind of issues that come up, normal everyday things that come up, it's really important if you're able to sit down and think about it so you can really process through that and get to um, figure out how to fix this issue. Problem solving can be big. And also when you're problem solving, if you have a group of people in your family, it's really important to listen to other people's ideas. I know that's an issue for some people. They don't wanna hear other people's ideas because you know they don't might not think they're good. But pieces I have found in my life taking a piece of this and a piece of that and a piece of this, it works. You know, maybe one way isn't the only way, but maybe going about it in different ways. I always love to hear other people's ideas of how they would fix a problem because it helps me. And I might hear, oh, that piece sounds really good. I'm gonna try that, you know, with this other piece that this other person recommended. So I love to try new things. I think it's important. That's how we find things that work for us. And working on those problem solving skills definitely are something that we all can use. And so when we get to an issue, we can fix it, figure out what to do about it. Even if we have to ask someone for idea help, well, we might have to do that and that's okay. Being able to listen to them is really important and hearing what they're saying. <clears throat> Number nine, self-defense. Self-defense is super important. Whether it's, you know, physically self-defending yourself, uh, knowing how to get away from someone if you got grabbed, uh, how to shoot a firearm, how to, you know, use a knife, things like that. They're not things that we do every single day. The world is getting crazier and crazier by the day. I hear of the craziest things out there. I can't even believe some of the stuff that's happening. Um, but we need to be prepared and ready to defend ourselves, defend our families, and defend our property. So I think the, that is super important. And looking at all the different layers. I mean, just because you carry a firearm doesn't mean that's for every situation. You know, you probably would never want to shoot a child. If some child attacked you, pepper spray might be better. You know, there are other options to have. You don't want to have just one way to defend yourself. Having more than one option is really important um, because, you know, there are those situations where not every situation you're going to shoot a gun or, or tie someone up or, you know, whatever your plan is. But there are many different ways to do it and having multiple options are going to help you get through horrible situations. And number 10, navigation. Reading maps, compasses, things like that. I think those are so important. Um, knowing how to read a compass, knowing how to look at the sun and see which way is north, south, east, and west. That is really important as well. Um, knowing that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west, again, is really important. Some people don't think about this stuff. You know, the sun's out, it's bright, it's whatever, you know, but looking at the sun and knowing which direction it's going, watching it for a few minutes, you can tell. Um, but also maps, compasses, they really can help you. If you don't have a compass and you're looking at a map, you can tell by which way the sun is going. You know, so there are more than one way to do things. And I think it's important to learn a couple of different options because if you have a compass and it breaks or you lose it, you need another option. 
So there are other ways to do things, and I think that is important. Even a paper clip in some water on a leaf, I have seen that done before, and it actually works. So there are many different ways to go about things, but skills are probably your number one best prep. I love learning new skills. Um, I think they are so important. I love teaching my kids skills. Um, I want them to have the skills. If anything happens to me, I need to know that they're going to be okay as well. So I like to learn skills with them so we can do these things together. It's great bonding time for the family and it helps everybody. Um, if we had a long-term situation, they're going to be able to jump in and help. You know, it's not going to be like they have no idea. They're going to have some of those skills and be prepared to help with whatever needs to be done. So skills, skills, skills. I think they are so important. If you have other skills that you think are super important to learn, put them in the comments down below. I think we all can use as many skills as possible because those skills are what saves your life in an emergency or disaster situation. And that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you next time. Bye.